Okay, Bohr just didn't work, and th he even knew it didn't work, and everybody knew it didn't work, but they just glossed over. Listen. Bohr knew that spinning electrons do radiate energy. So what's going on with the electron? By 1927, with the help of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, Bohr came up with his answer. You can't ask that question. You can't ask what the electron is or what the electron is doing. You can only ask, what can you measure about an electron? Well, I showed the electron, so that's just wrong. Okay, I said I wanted to try to explain the unexplainable Bohr theory. Well, let me tell you the truth. It's just unexplainable. And this is Yale. Now, I went to, well, I didn't go to Yale, but I took all the courses at Yale, the uh, physics courses. They're online. You can take them. And this is the professor, and he starts off the whole thing with, the, this is going to be into the double slit, slit wave particle duality experiment, which they don't understand. Now listen to what he has to say. It's a very exciting day for me, because today we're going to start quantum mechanics, and that's all we'll do till the end of the term. Now, I got bad news and good news. The bad news is that it's a subject that's kind of hard to follow intuitively. And the good news is that nobody can follow it intuitively. Uh, Richard Feynman, one of the big uh, figures in physics, used to say no one understands quantum mechanics. So in some sense, the pressure is off for you guys because I don't get it and you don't get it and Feynman doesn't get it. The point is, here's my goal right now. I am the only one who doesn't understand quantum mechanics. In about seven days, all of you will be unable to understand quantum mechanics. Then you can go back and spread your ignorance everywhere else. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> he's, just, he's exactly right. Okay, my friends, I'm going to make this short and sweet. The current atomic model, completely wrong. I will show you what the current is in the middle in a, in a minute. This is Roger's model, and the nucleus is a dipole. It is not a big positive, and it is surrounded by electrons, and most of the dark other side of the electron is in the center. Electrons are made of two parts. There's a dark side. Nobody's ever seen it before, and there's the electron. Now, when I say nobody's ever seen it before, the only ones that have seen it is CERN and Fermilab they've, and places like that. They've seen these dark particles and they've seen electron showers and they have no idea about them. All they know is those are little tiny particles that come when they smash protons together and they're just debris. And then they say, well, they must be this. And then they add a little piece and they find a bigger piece and they think they're all subatomic particles. They are not. The only ones that are subatomic particles, well, the, everything is made of these two particles, a muon and an electron, and they glue together like unbelievably tight. And they are a dipole. A dipole means it has a positive end and a negative end. The positive end is the muon. The negative end is the electron. The negative end is the one that pushes and shoves and glows and sparks and does all that stuff. The muon does absolutely nothing, zero, other than to pull everybody back to it. That is gravity. And it is also dark matter. That's my claim. If anybody can prove me wrong, prove me wrong. When you take two of these back to back, they turn into a photon, shown it a bazillion times. When you add a pile of them together, at 1839 and 1840, they become pretty stable. That's called a proton at 1839, 1839 and 1840 is a neutron because it's neutral. It doesn't have that, that uneven number. An uneven number means it's either negative or it's positive, but right in the middle, it's neutral. Now, what is my model? I'm going to show you this related to the Bohr and the Rutherford model, and then you will see Roger's model wins. <laughs> now, don't forget, the dark matter is going to be the um, red. The blue is the electrons. All right, so the blue for them is the electrons. And let's get into it and look. And don't forget, this electron flood theory, dipole, molecular, atomic, subatomic, 
theory, Rogers model. All right, there's very little difference between the Bohr model and my model. We know there's a nucleus, the little center. He says it's completely positive. Not correct. It is a dipole. And the negative particles, not completely negative, wrong. They are also dipoles. Everything is made of the same particles. These are just in the core, and they mass into certain quantities to become stable and are our elements. They can break apart. They can, you can add a few extra electrons, take a few away. Those are called isotopes. When they're not exactly a certain number in the nucleus, which is the stable 100%, they can go, you know, they call it um, nuclear decay and stability. The, the, the time is stable. Some of them are only stable for seconds. Some of them are stable for very long times. It just depends on how many electrons are in the core. If it's not the quantity that makes it very you know, they, they will shake. They, they shake amongst themselves, just in the core of them. And some of them shake so much, they fall apart. Uranium, plutonium, all that stuff. The other ones, you know, even like carbon-13, carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14, carbon they are, they break apart. So there's not just one big gigantic core that's not divisible. It's absolutely divisible. And it's divisible by particles which are called dipole electrons. That's why you, you can have some of these things like, uh, I think lithium has like, I don't know, it's got a ton of isotopes, I think there are 32 isotopes or some ridiculous number of isotopes. And so it can add, you know, a whole batch of electrons, take a whole batch away, and it's still the same element, but it's just unstable or and going to fall apart. All right, there's no sense to make this more complicated than it needs to be. All I did was realize that the center could not be positive and tiny little negatives, but they could pop together. Fifty years ago, that made me leave physics. This is the correct dipole. I mean, and I can show you this in light. Light particles are the smallest particles that exist. These are the things that bounce away from, from atoms to make go turn into light. And here's what they look like. And two of them back, back to back together are a photon. And I show that very clearly. So that's the difference between the Bohr model and Rogers model, is that every single particle there is is a, is a dipole electron. And you just keep them making more and more and more of them, and then they turn into elements. When they're on a the move, they're light. When they're electricity, there's only one of them. When they're light, there's two of them back to back. All right, so don't forget, instead of that, this is what the core looks like. And every one of these is an electron, but each one of them is a little magnet. So I've got a plus, plus and a minus, not just one or the other. This is my core. And this is what you would see. You would not see that inside, and you would never see any of the dark ones. They just, they don't emit, they don't absorb, they don't reflect, they don't do anything. And now I have discovered that they do not compress either. The dark matter will be inside encapsulated completely with inside the white matter and if you took that core and broke it open you would find the dark core inside which is the um the dark matter and it's muons and it's everything else and they attach to the glowing little electrons Okay, when you stimulate something to produce light, you are literally throwing off these particles. And these are those particles right there. Only they don't come out in single electrons. They come out as photons. Back to back. You see them? Back to back. That, that's these two particles glued together. Now, they float around the core of the nucleus. And when they get ex excited, they gets thrown off and in the case of a laser they get shot out in a beam and this is it right here it's just nothing more than light so light is light so you can see that it's accelerating so Einstein was wrong this is a particle we can see the particle so the wave particle deal is over and the wave is because th these are magnetic particles they're ju just like bar magnets as they go through the air there's a magnetic wave in front of them that's the wave the particle is the magnet Let's close that case. Now, what about CERN? What about the rest of these guys? What do they want to see? Well, they want to see exactly what I just showed you. They want to see that muon, which is the black ball, 
divided from the white showers, which was the white ball. And here it is right here. There's the muon neutrino, which was the black ball, to attach to the white ball, the electron neutrino, and then they explode. And that, the black one never goes anywhere, it just stays the way it was, and the white one goes into a shower. Don't forget, the electron is just a single set. Photons, back to back, they bounce off, they don't incorporate, electrons will burn you, electricity, lightning, static, pew, ow, ooh, ah. Photons, just light bounces off, because they're already pretty well neutralized. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. Dark matter, muons, call them what you will. All it is is gravity. It doesn't reflect, it doesn't attract. I mean, it doesn't reflect, it doesn't absorb. It, re it attracts, it attracts all of its other particles. The black ones want to be right next to the other black ones, and they want to be hugged up to the white ones. The white ones hate each other. They will get away from each other just as fast as they possibly can. The black ones you see over here, they never change. They don't concuss, uh, they concuss hard as hell because they're like a bowling ball. These are like little fluffy puffers. There's just no weight to them at all. They're explosive and they burn, yes, absolutely. But there's no real weight to them. These are bowling balls and no burn to them. Just the opposite. They're totally opposites. This is, this is dark matter. It does not absorb. This does absorb. This does not reflect. This reflects. This does not emit. That does emit. This does not compress. And this obviously can compress. And, and They're exactly totally opposites of each other. Dark matter is attached to light.